how much home can you afford with an $85,000 per year salary on an FHA loan as a first time home buyer? My name is Fred Chilton. I'm a mortgage broker in Texas. I've been originating loans for the past five years. And the reason why I'm talking about an FHA loan for an $85,000 income is because it's one of the most lenient loans when it comes to debt to income ratio. Now you may be wondering what debt to income ratio is or you have heard about it. It's a very simple concept. What it is, it's whatever your debts are that would show up on a credit report, such as your mortgage, your credit cards, your car payments, student loans, etc. divided by your total monthly income income pre-tax. Now, the neat thing about FHA loans is that you can go up to 57% debt to income ratio, whereas other loans like conventional will typically limit you to 45, sometimes 49.99%, which is kind of difficult to pass. But an FHA loan, you can go up to 57%. Another thing about FHA loans is that it's a great loan for first time home buyers because you only need to put three and a half percent down, whereas conventional, you need to put 5% down. Typically, there are loan options where you can put three percent down but an FHA loan you do three and a half percent down and it's very lenient on your credit score so your credit score doesn't play as big of a factor as it does on a conventional or jumbo loan you get a better rate with an FHA loan at the end of the day now if you want to do three and a half percent down on an FHA loan you're gonna to need to go ahead and have a credit score of 580 or above however if you do have a score under 580 you can go as low as 500 you need to put 10 percent or more down so that still gives you an option to buy a house you just need to have a little bit more money saved up so let's Let's go back to our example of making $85,000 per year. How much house can you afford with that salary? As I said, a key factor towards loan approval is debt to income ratio besides credit and other factors. But debt to income ratio is pretty simple. You take whatever debts you have that would pop up on a credit report, like your credit cards, car loans, student loans, etc., and you divide that by your total monthly income before tax. So an $85,000 salary divided by 12 months comes out to about seven thousand eighty three dollars per month pre-tax and 57 percent of that is about four thousand dollars so that means your mortgage plus your other expenses credit cards car loans whatever it may be we have different debts can total up to four thousand dollars and you can potentially qualify for an FHA loan. So reverse engineering it, this is gonna be a little bit different for each and every state, but if you made $85,000 per year, and let's just say you had about $700 in expenses on a monthly basis that were showing up on your credit report, like you had a car note, you had some student loans, credit cards, you would actually qualify for a house that's up to $400,000. Now this could be higher, it could be lower, it all depends on how much debt you have, but theoretically, if you made $85,000, you could qualify for up to $400,000 on a home value. A few things to note about the FHA loan, closing costs are gonna be a little bit higher than a conventional loan or any other loan out there. And that's mainly because you have to pay 1.75% of what's called upfront mortgage insurance premium. And that goes to the FHA or HUD. This in a sense is a funding fee. It goes to them because they're insuring your loan in case of default. That happens every single time you get an FHA loan. However, whenever you do refinance within a certain period of time, I would say within 36 to 48 months, a portion of that UFMIP gets refunded towards your closing costs so that you don't have to pay if you are refinancing frequently. For example, if you're doing what's called a streamlined refinance, where you refinance to drop your rate and monthly payment from these high interest rates to hopefully something a lot lower in the near future. One other thing to know is you have something called MIP, which is pretty similar to PMI. MIP stands for mortgage insurance premium. That sticks around for the life of the loan if you put less than 10% down on the down payment. However, if you put 10% or more down, that will drop off after 11 years. And you might be saying, why the hell would I do an FHA loan if the MIP is going to be there for 11 years? And while that may seem like it's a long time, don't worry, you can actually get rid of that by refinancing into a conventional loan. So by that time, hopefully you have 20% equity and you can get rid of that MIP and not have to worry about it. An FHA loan is one of my favorite first time home buyer loans. However, it's not for everyone. If your mortgage FICO scores are under 6 75, I would maybe recommend going with an FHA loan, especially if you're doing a low down payment, because you're gonna get a monthly payment that's gonna be better than a conventional, and you won't get hit with something called a loan level pricing adjustment, not nearly as hard as you would on a conventional. What that means is you get a better interest rate, and you get a better monthly payment with an FHA loan. The Biden-Harris administration did just release some great news. They are lowering the amount that you have to pay for the MIP. Don't get this confused with the UFMIP, the MIP you pay on a monthly basis, but 
that just drops significantly. And in the $400,000 house example, you will actually save about $100 per month with the new MIP chain. I hope this video was helpful. Again, my name is Fred Chilton. If you ever want to talk about a pre-qualification or pre-approval, whether it be now or later on, leave me a comment and I will definitely send you a message and we can go through that together and get you a free consultation. Have a good one.